Hello everyone, welcome again to another Word for Today with Ray. And before we begin, as usual, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, it is so much fun to know that we've got a God whom we can adore, who is so great, whose creation is wonderful. And Lord, that at all times we can look around and know that you are a marvelous God that does wonderful things. So today, Lord, we're asking you as our wonderful Savior to come and visit with us as we study your word, to send your Holy Spirit to guide us into all truth and to equip us to live according to that truth so that we might be pleasing in your eyes. Teach us today, we pray in Jesus' name, amen. The title to today's lesson is False Brethren Unawares, and it's taken from Galatians chapter 2 and verse 4. After much background and persuasion, we might think that Paul the Apostle has conveyed his thoughts to the church members in Galatia about the false teachers who were among them. However, when we read today's verse found in Galatians chapter 2 and verse 4, we will discover how Paul is so direct about these false teachers that there can be no mistake about his words. He wrote, And that because of false brethren unaware brought in, who came in privately or privily to spy out our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage. Paul told us in the previous verse that his traveling companion, Titus, was not compelled to be circumcised according to the law. And he began with this verse with, and that because of false brethren unawares brought in. If the Galatian church did not know who he was speaking of before, they do now. These false brethren, and they were brought in unawares, which means secretly, surreptitiously, or as one stolen in. In other words, these false teachers were infiltrating the churches, and they were sent into the churches on purpose. The question is, why? Let's look at what Paul said next. Who came in privately or privately to spy out our liberty which we have in Christ Jesus? These false teachers came in privately simply as spies to discover whether they could find faults with Paul and the church members there. Notice they came to the church to do this. This is usually the way with false teachers. They prey upon the church membership rather than take their doctrine to the world. These false brethren desired to find occasions against Paul and his companions that would prove their own positions of being right. Their legalism held a certain standard, and obedience to the law which they themselves could not keep would be their measure by whether Paul and his group were true believers. Paul adds that they might bring us into bondage. Paul tells the church members in Galatia that these who were behind this action had the purpose of bringing them into bondage or slavery to their rules. The Judaizers, remember, were proponents of believing in Jesus, but also keeping the law. They desired to have Paul, his companions, and anyone he reached with the gospel of Jesus Christ to follow the letter of the law. This would put people back into the bondage of the law and therefore away from the need for Jesus Christ as Savior. Paul calls them false brethren. He exposed their spying and reveals their motive all in one verse. Can we feel the tension he has toward them? What about those within our world today? Are there false brethren among us as well? Are there those in the world who seek to infiltrate the church membership and infuse them with doctrines that include the keeping of the law or their laws to truly be saved? If we look around, it does seem that everyone believes themselves to be right and that there is no absolute gospel of any sort. However, as we study this book of, to the Galatian church members, perhaps we will be better equipped to know that there are imposters, posers, and false teachers who bring pernicious words and legalism into the church. We would all do well to examine our own lives to be sure that we too are not believing or behaving as one of them. And as we do, may the gospel of the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ shine upon us all. Next time we will see what Paul did with these false brethren. So read ahead and let us join together then. 
Until tomorrow, there is more. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace as you continue to study his word in Jesus' name.